We are honored to be joined by the mayor of Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, Marty Small Sr. Mr. Mayor, great to have you with us. Yes, uh, thanks for having me, Steve. Uh, thanks to your viewing audience. And it's a great day here in the city of Atlantic City. Let me ask you this. As we tape on the 23rd of March, it'll be seen later. What makes these days, particularly with the challenges around COVID, so positive for Atlantic City and, and, and your leadership down there? Well, listen, um, we handled the pandemic. Uh, we were extremely proactive from the beginning, um, calling for local testing sites, and we delivered for our residents. We had a walk-up at Showboat parking lot, a drive-through at Beta Field. We fed 3,780 senior citizens two hot meals per week. Um, we had a field hospital here. We had one of the mega vaccination sites. And for the numbers to not even reach 4,000 with the great city of Atlantic City being a tourist destination, um, it's a tribute to all that worked hard during this pandemic. We're not out of the woods yet, and um, we want to continue to provide the leadership that's needed during these difficult times. You know, uh, Mr. Mayor, you talk about the uh, resort city. What do you believe the longer term impact will be? Like, as we tape in this program in spring and moves into the summer, I know we can't predict and know what the restrictions will be, what the governor will do or not do. But in terms of the casino industry, what impact do you believe it will have in the next several months? Um, I believe as we um, continue to open up, um, the occupancy loads um, continue to increase. I believe that Atlantic City is going uh, to soar. Um, you saw it last summer when I made the decision when everyone around, around us were closing to close that beach and boardwalk, we stayed open. And I believe that that was a benefit when things opened up. Um, we have 50% right now with the casinos. Um, simple mathematics says that the economy is on the way back because now you're going to need at least double the amount of jobs. And I think that um, through this summer, um, through the late spring and summer, you want to see things hopefully back to an old sense of normalcy. And as I stated, we're coming back with a vengeance. And, and giving people, Mayor Small, a sense of confidence that they are safe. Listen, the vaccine distribution, we hope and pray it continues to go well. But we don't know what the variants, we don't know what's going to happen. But what is the message you want to deliver to folks about how safe it is to be in Atlantic City, particularly not just on the, your wonderful boardwalk, but in those casinos? Well, as Dr. Fauci often stated, the virus is the timeline. We will not be irresponsible. I was quoted last year on another news network saying that all money is in good money. Um, as mayor, I'm responsible for the health, safety, and welfare of the good people of Atlantic City. And we're not going to make any crazy decisions. We're not going to govern on feelings and emotion. We're going to be guided by our health experts and the data that's presented. Um, though some state, some states cases uh, are rising with the multiple variants out there. But here at our center, um, we're vaccinating over 4,000 people a day, and hopefully that continues to uh, climb. Um, we want to get as many shots in people's arms as we possibly can um, to let the world know that when you do come to the great Atlantic City, to, to the great city of Atlantic City, that you want to be safe and secure, and people are going to maintain uh, social distance and wear their masks. Mayor, the, the communities outside of Atlantic City, there's been lots of talk and news coverage over the years about um, the tale, if you will. It sounds like a cliche of two Atlantic cities, the, uh, the, the, the lights, the, the, the sh glimmering, if you will, the shimmering, if you will, of the casinos and the communities outside. What is the employment situation in Atlantic City as we speak right now, particularly as it's been impacted by COVID? outside of the casinos? Yes, um, you know, unemployment uh, numbers are skyrocketed. As you know, um, we can't often rely on casinos anymore because of the neighboring competition, but the casinos are our biggest employer. And you can't have 100% of the people employed when just before last Friday, you had 25% of the people um, allowed to occupy the space. So um, that's gonna shift. Um, private jobs are opening up. Here at the city of Atlantic City, we're hiring a job placement coordinator. We're working with the Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver on the Atlantic City Restart and Recovery Committee. Um, the casinos, um, right at, at the perfect time as we gear up for the season, 50% um, occupancy as we speak. Hopefully by Memorial Day is 75%, but that's going to be by the numbers. But here in the city of Atlantic City, we're going to continue our agenda. One thing we've learned that we have to create 
pandemic proof industries. So we have a small business academy to promote entrepreneurs. We have a real estate um, cohort where 15 Atlantic City residents are learning real estate. And by um, the end of the month, if they pass the test, they'll do that. We're going to teach the community how to invest. We want to grow with the time. This is a new way. Um, COVID has told everyone to get creative. And not only are we focusing on bringing jobs back, but we first, we are we focusing on uh, creating entrepreneurs to give people more options. In the minute we have left, the role of the state in being supportive of Atlantic City is, finish that sentence, Mr. Mayor, sentence, please. Okay, so goes Atlantic City, so goes the state. Um, the state of New Jersey is committed to the great city of Atlantic City. We have a tremendous partnership with Trenton. Um, things are getting done. We are still an investor confidence here in the great city of Atlantic City. And I'm just thrilled to be the mayor doing this great time because as we often say, tough times don't last, tough people do. The city of Atlantic City has been counted out time and time again. They counted this out in 2012 with Hurricane Sandy. They counted this out in 14 when five casino closed. They counted this out in 16 when we were teetering on the brink of bankruptcy and the state came in to take over. But those days are long gone. Now Atlantic City is fiscally sound. Standard and Poor's and Moody's have upgraded the city two years, uh, two, two consecutive years. And for the second year in a row, we're delivering the good people of Atlantic City a tax decrease. Now that's leadership. Well, I'll tell you what, if enthusiasm and passion has anything to do with leadership, um, you are all there. Mr. Mayor, uh, Marty Small, senior. By the way, at uh, 29, the youngest member sworn in to be a member of the city council. Uh, Back in the day, which I can't believe I'm saying, it's not that long ago. Hey, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much. You honor us by being with us. Best to you and everyone down in Atlantic City. Hope to see you soon. Thank you. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. Stay with us. We'll be right back. State of Affairs with Steve Adubato is a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by NJM Insurance Group, Englewood Health, the Healthcare Foundation of New Jersey, the New Jersey Education Association. Rowan University, Operating Engineers, Local 825, The Russell Berry Foundation, Fedway Associates, Inc., IBEW Local 102, and by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by Meadowlands Chamber, and by NJ Biz. Are you looking to be a part of a dynamic, forward-thinking business service organization? At the Meadowlands Chamber, every day we connect, collaborate, and innovate, helping to drive business and economic growth in the greater Meadowlands and New Jersey. I invite you to visit our Meadowlands Chamber headquarters, an open office facility with access to resources for our members, businesses, and networking needs. Together we will build the Chamber of the Future and the next generation of leaders.